No max HP champs, no problem. Mid game budget Hydra team coming up. What is going on Raiders? Soda Dragon here. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas weekend and today I'm coming at you with a mid game budget build for the Hydra. So first off, yes, this is a Shemail team, but four out of the six characters used in this comp are completely accessible to everybody if they play this game long enough. And even if you don't have all the characters in this comp yet, besides Shemail that is, there are really good substitutions that you can make. So do you absolutely need Shemail to fight the Hydra? No, you do not. The highest damage teams that I have seen post deterrence nerf don't even include Shemail. So these are like one to two key nightmare teams. Yeah, they don't even have Shemail in their teams. So no, you do not need him. But if you have him, especially for your early and mid game teams, he makes a huge difference. If you're end game, yeah, you're not gonna need him. But if you're early to mid game and you have him, he makes such a difference. So guys, here is the team and notice four out of the six champs are completely accessible to everybody. So we have Vizic, you just log in enough and you get her. We have Ninja, seven day login champ. Now we do have Arbiter, you can earn her and Lydia as well, you can earn her. Now we do have uh, Volgoth here, but he's not absolutely required for this team. You can substitute him pretty much for any healer. So if you want, you can substitute Volgoth in for Sill of the Drakes or something like that. Then that would make five out of the six champs here accessible to everybody pretty much. Now, what do you think a team like this can do as far as damage on the normal clan boss? Check this out, guys. 35 million, pretty much almost 36 million on normal. Insane for this comp. Just look at the accessibility here. Now, you might be saying, well, not everybody has these champs. Yeah, I know. This is a mid-game comp. This is not a beginner's comp. But chances are, if you've been playing this game for a while and you're mid-game, so to speak, you're already done with your Arbiter missions, you might be close to Lydia, the Faction Wars, right? Getting her, or you have her. And if you don't, they're substitutes. And we get uh, Vizix just from logging in. Ninja, I expect, if you're mid-game, you have been playing long enough to get Ninja. I mean, come on, right? Yes, you're going to need to pull Shamel. This is a Shamel comp. But beyond that, if you got him, look at the ridiculous damage you can do. So what kind of damage numbers can you expect in the higher difficulties with this comp? Well, my boy YST did some testing for me in the hard difficulty of the Hydra, and he got about 20 million, so that is a one key. Now, I would bet this team can do a two key for Brutal. So we're talking one key normal, one key hard, and two key Brutal. So there'll be links below to YST's YouTube channel. He does a lot of really great raid content, so definitely check him out. So guys, how does this team work in a nutshell? Well, in that lead spot is Ninja. He is our primary damage dealer, plus being in that lead spot, even though he doesn't have an aura, he's being turn meter boosted by Shamail a lot, and he's doing a ton of damage. So it's actually worth it to have him in that lead spot, even without an aura. Now, theoretically, you could replace him with whoever is your primary damage dealer, if you want, and then they could, in turn, get turn meter boosted by Shamail a lot and get a lot more turns. Or you guys can put actually a turn meter booster in that lead spot and then that turn meter booster gets boosted by Shamel and then they in turn boost everybody so kind of uh, up to you how you want to roll with it but Ninja he works really well in that lead spot getting turn meter boosted a ton and in turn doing a ton of damage next up we got Arbiter we're using her for her turn meter boosting her increased attack buff her healing and her res abilities. So really you could replace her with another healer slash reviver if you want, but Arbiter works just fine as well. So guys, next up we got Vizic. So what are we using her for primarily? Her AOE decrease speed. So if you don't have Vizic yet, you can substitute in another AOE decrease speed champ. But Vizic works really well, not only because of that AOE decrease speed, but also she has ally protection, which is good for your less tanky champs. Plus, she does have good damage multipliers with two AoEs. So we're going to make use of her whole kit here. Now, her A1, yes, we cannot uh, turn meter decrease any of the Hydra heads. But still, all her skills have pretty good damage multipliers. And all that damage adds up. Next up, guys, we got Lydia. So what does she do for the team? Well, she is allowing us to do more damage with her AoE decrease defense and weaken. Plus, to keep us alive, that is our team, she has strengthen and she has an increased speed buff over the whole team. So, not only does she put out the debuffs to increase our damage, she puts up the buffs to decrease the damage that we take. Plus, she has a really nice single target block buffs debuff, which will be very important for that head of mischief. 
Now, who's a good substitute for her? Well, if you don't have her yet, you can use Stagnite. Now, Stagnite's kit is not as good as hers. I mean, just to be honest, but it works pretty well. So you can probably get really good damage still if you don't have Lydia by using someone like a Stagnite. So guys, next up is Shamayo, and he is the only person on the team that is irreplaceable. So for this comp to work, you need Shamayo. So what does he do for the team? Well, when you target the Head of Torment with a character that is not Veiled, the Head of Torment has a passive that will attempt to put a fear uh, on your champ that attacked the Head of Torment. Well, uh, Shamayo not only takes that fear off, but he turn meter boosts the leader. Now, who's our leader? Whoever you want it to be, but our leader is Ninja right here. So he's gonna end up getting a lot of turn meter boosting because we're gonna target the Head of Torment on purpose to get that fear put on us and to get Shamail to remove it and turn meter boost the leader, okay? So yes, Shamail is gonna be an integral part of this team, but beyond that, we're gonna need the Head of Torment to reproduce itself regularly. So after you kill a head, there's a chance that it can spawn a different type of head, not the first one that it started with. So there's a lot of RNG involved. We basically need the Head of Torment to respawn a lot to get our damage numbers up this high. But if it does, and you know, this whole Hydra fight is RNG. If you didn't know that, it's ridiculous RNG. But yeah, if you get lucky and you get that uh, Head of Torment to respawn regularly or somewhat regularly, yes, you can do a ton of damage with this particular comp because of Shumail. All right, guys, lastly, on to the sixth spot with Volgov. So what does he do for the team? Well, uh, he solves a problem. So what's the problem? How do you fight the Hydra team using buffs? Now, why is this a problem? I mean, we fight a lot of people using buffs. We fight a lot of bosses, clan boss, whatever. Well, it's a problem for the Hydra heads because of the Head of Mischief. The Head of Mischief can not only steal buffs, but can spread them through the Hydra heads. So any buffs you put on your team can be stolen and spread to the rest of the Hydra heads, which is bad news. All of a sudden, you don't have an advantage anymore because everybody, uh, the Hydra heads and your whole team, might have all the same buffs, right? No good. So if you're going to use buffs on your team, and you don't have to, but if you're gonna use buffs on your team, you need a solution to the Head of Mischief. So what is the solution? It involves a super slow champ that is high resistance. So what does being super slow do? Well, buffs fall off depending on how many turns your champs take, right? So if uh, your champ takes turns slower, then those buffs should fall off slower, right? So the way the Head of Mischief works is it targets the champ with the most buffs. So really by making a sixth champ, whoever they are, super slow, those buffs are gonna fall off that champ the slowest. So theoretically, they would be targeted by Head of Mischief more often because they would have more buffs on them. And you're gonna make them high resist to resist that stealing of buffs by the Head of Mischief. It is resistible, so you can resist it. So that is one way to solve that problem, so to speak, of the Mischief stealing and spreading buffs. Now, Volgoth works pretty well because while he's being targeted and while he's being hit, yes, he's going to uh, spread out 50% of the damage that is dealt to him as healing for the rest of the team. So that's one really nice thing about Volgoth and making him this super slow tank, uh, high resist, because while he's being targeted, while he's being hit with that A1 from the Head of Mischief all the time, he is actually healing the team for 50% of the damage dealt to him. But once again, you can put really anybody in this slot. I would recommend a healer, but you can try, for example, Scylla the Drakes. I think she would work pretty well. Just make her super slow and put high resistance on her. Now, yes, her um, passive works by her taking turns, so you're not gonna take the best advantage of her passive, that healing passive, by making her slow, but still, she can function in that role. So really, anybody you want to solve that problem of the head of mischief, once again, make them super slow and make them high resist. So lastly, guys, an important thing to note about this team is it does not have any AoE enemy max HP champs like Royal Guard or Husk. Now, just to be honest with you guys, the highest damage teams do use those champs. That is uh, Husk or Royal Guard because they have AoE enemy max HP skills. Um, so yeah, if you're talking about like doing the absolute max damage, you're going to need some of those champs. But look at the damage you can do without enemy max HP, like really, really good damage. So just because you don't have a World Guard or Husk, don't worry. You can still do very, very solid damage. All right, guys, on to everyone's gear, stats, and masteries. And after this, I'm going to show you a Hydra run and give you the strategy on how to deal with the different heads. 
So firstly, we got Vizix here, and I have her in a Relentless and an Immortal set. On to her total stats. So I have her at 51,000 health. I have her attack at 1,900. I have the defense 3,600. I have the speed 216. I have the crit rate 103. Crit damage 121. I have the resistance at 250 and have the accuracy 297. On to a mastery. So starting with the offense tree here, we do have War Master, so we're getting bonus damage based off enemy max HP. Now down the defense tree, I do have deterrence here. So this did get nerfed recently. It now has a one turn cooldown. Uh, whereas before it did not what this allows you to do when you target the head of torment is 20 percent of the time she will attack it just because it puts a fear on somebody else and then that in turn puts a fear on her which in turn shamel gets rid of and turn meter boost your leader whoever that is so it's really this cycle it used to be this endless cycle before this one turn cooldown but still this is uh still a good uh mastery to get and lastly here, you can choose if you want Master Hexer for her decreased speed debuff. So you're potentially extending it here. This would be another good one to get, but really up to you whether or not you want to go the Master Hexer or the Deterrence route. Next up, guys, we got Arbiter, and I have her geared in two speed sets and a broken set. On to her total stats. So I have her at 44,000 health. I have the attack at 2,400. I have the defense at 2400. I have the speed 341. Now, if you don't have these kinds of speeds, it's okay. Just make her as fast as you can. The only reasons I have her at the speed is she's on some of my arena team, so she needs to be pretty fast. So I have the crit rate 28%, crit damage 177%. You don't need either of these. I have the resistance 320. This is not a high resist team. You do not need resistance for this team. The only reason I have it this way is, once again, this is... Um, my arbiter for the arena and resistance is good in the arena and lastly your accuracy at 224 you don't need this stat either on to our masteries and guys these masteries are for the arena so don't think these are hydra specific they're not uh, but one mastery in particular i think works well for her in the hydra fight and it is this tier 6 support mastery timely intervention so increases this champion's turn meter by 20 percent whenever an ally hero drops below 25 percent hp so really helpful for allowing her to cut in at the right time when people have their health low and she can come in with a turn meter boost or a heal or a revive or whatever so this is really good for her in general and yeah it works pretty well for the arena too all right guys on to ninja so how have i geared him i have him in a relentless set and an immortal set on to his total stats so i have him at 49,000 health i have the attack at 3700 so yes you need a lot of attack to make him hit hard he is your damage dealer for this fight have his defense at 1900 speed 187 make him as fast as you can crit rate 107 so you want that minimum of 100 percent crit rate uh crit damage 207 pretty good get that as high as you can i have the resistance here 185 remember we don't need resistance for any of our characters besides that last spot where in our team volgoth takes that place and the accuracy 227 pump this up as high as you can as well especially if you're fighting the hydra in higher difficulties on to the mastery so here i do have this uh tier 6 mastery war master so he's doing bonus damage based off enemy max hp so definitely get that for ninja if you're using him for his damage and down the support tree i have master hexer this is for his hp burn uh, plus his a1 strong version decrease defense debuff so both of those can potentially be extended one turn because of this mastery so very good mastery to take and i also have sniper here this is primarily for his a1 that decreased defense does not have a hundred percent chance to land on his a1 so here with sniper that increases the chance by five percent so though we have lydia in the team as she is applying decreased defense she will not be able to keep it up 100 of the time so really sniper is useful because of a ninja's a1 so we're going to make use of that decreased defense when uh the decreased defense from lydia falls off next up guys we got lydia so how have i geared her i have her in a relentless set and a speed set on to a total stats so i have her at 44,000 health I have her attack at 2000, I have the defense at 2700, I have the speed at 254, I have the crit rate 112, crit damage 120, so really any champs that you can fit in crit rate and crit damage, try to do that. All that damage adds up, even Lydia. Alright, so we have the resist here, 130, remember, all we need is resist for Volgoth, that's it. And we have the accuracy at 435. So you don't need accuracy this high, but I use her in other areas as well. That's why I have her accuracy pumped up like crazy, but you don't need accuracy this high. Make her as high accuracy as you can. Onto our masteries. So these masteries here are primarily for Doom Tower where I use her the most, uh, but how would I change her masteries 
for specifically the Hydra? Well, firstly, I would not go Fearsome Presence. This is absolutely useless for the Hydra. What would I do? I would go with this Tier 6 Mastery War Master. So get that bonus damage based off enemy max HP. Now, she and this comp is already doing over 3 million damage. So this would just increase it. So great. All the damage adds up, as I've said before. And I would definitely keep the support tree. So lasting gifts, you're potentially increasing the duration of the buffs that she casts. And with Master Hexer, you are potentially increasing the durations of the debuffs that she casts. All right, guys, on to Shamael, really the star of the show and the only irreplaceable person in this comp. So how have I geared him? I have him in a Toxic set and an Immortal set. So this Toxic set, if you've seen it on people uh, in Hydra teams, this is outdated. So this is what we used to gear him in when Deterrence was not nerfed. So there's a particular reason for that, and it's too long to get into it. But Toxic is not the way to go for Shamail anymore. So if you're using Shamail, then put him in some sort of offense set, cruel set, savage set, a damage dealing set. You're going to get so much more damage out of him. So I was using this Toxic set, as I mentioned, outdated. And still, the cop was doing 35 million damage. So really ridiculous. So definitely, he would have done millions more damage with a better set. So if you can, cruel or savage plus cruel. Don't. Go with the Toxic anymore, guys, it's outdated. On to his total stats. So here I have him at 49,000 health. I have the attack at 3,500. So his damage is based on attack. So pump up that attack stat as much as you can. Defense, 1,800. I have the speed, 156. Crit rate, 97%. Crit damage, 134%. So pump up that crit damage as much as you can. I have the resistance, 142. You don't need resistance on him. But the accuracy, you could put it on him if you can fit it in because his A1 does remove buffs. So that could be useful, but not required. So if you can fit in accuracy in your Shamel, sure, do it. Uh, it could be useful to you, but if you can't, don't worry. All right, guys, on to his masteries and see, I have not even completed them. And this whole team is doing 35 million damage a ton. Think of how much more damage he would do in a better set and with War Master here, which I would definitely get for him. So that bonus damage based off enemy max HP. Really? Put this on him, get that bonus damage. Plus, I would go the deterrence route for him as well. So, War Master and deterrence. All right, guys, lastly, on to Vogoth. And no, your eyes are not playing tricks on you. I have four six star level 60 Vogoths. So, how have I geared this particular Vogoth in two resistance sets and one immortal set? Onto his total stats. So here I have him at 52,000 health, so pump this up as much as you can. Attack at 1,500, have the defense at 2,800, try to fit this in as well, make him tanky. Remember, his job is to be the target for the head of mischief most, if not all the time. So yeah, make him tanky with little HP and defense. So speed 110, make him as slow as you can. Um, the slower, the better, probably. We have the uh, crit rate at 86% and crit damage 129%. So yes, this Volgoth. When he does take turns, I want him to do damage. It all adds up, so you can add that in as well. So we resist here, 426, resisting the Head of Mischief's stealing of the buffs. So if the Head of Mischief cannot steal buffs, the Head of Mischief cannot spread those buffs. So definitely put up your resist. Uh, and here we have the accuracy at 189. You could go with a higher accuracy Volgoth in addition to the resistance uh, because Volgoth does have that leech in his passive, plus his A1 extends the durations of debuffs. So... Both important, both requiring accuracy, but not needed. So if you can fit it in, sure, put in some accuracy in your Volgoth. On to his masteries. So down the offense tree, I do have Giant Slayer instead of War Master. So if your champ has a multi-hitting A1, in particular three hits or above, then you could go Giant Slayer and increase the chance of getting that bonus damage versus something like War Master. So a good choice for Volgoth, he has a triple hitting A1. And I also went here with deterrence. So guys, what are some general things that we're looking for in particular with this Hydra fight? Number one is we do not ever want this Head of Wrath to spawn. Now it's not up to us, it's chance, but if this Head of Wrath spawns, you need to regroup and exit out of the fight. That's it, okay? So the best run you're gonna get is if this Head of Wrath never spawns. So that is the number one thing we want for a nice long high damage run. The second thing we're looking for is this Head of Torment to respawn regularly. Now you do start off the fight at least in this particular rotation with the Head of Torment, but eventually you're gonna decapitate it along with other heads, so you do want this head to respawn regularly. Why is that? So you can attack it, so it can apply a fear to your team, and Shamil can 
remove it and turn meter boost the leader which is ninja which is does huge damage so that's what we're looking for that cycle is pretty much what we're looking for most of the time now he does not have to spawn all of the time as long as the head of wrath doesn't spawn you can deal with whoever spawns but if he spawns regularly uh, or at least most of the time, then yeah, you're gonna have a pretty good run. So that is the second thing that we are looking for, the Head of Torment to spawn regularly, and hopefully most of the time. So what is the third thing that we we're looking for in a good fight? For the Head of Mischief to not swallow your champs that often. So once again, this is completely up to RNG, but if you can have the Head of Mischief not swallow your champs that often, that would make your run a lot better. Why is this? The Head of Mischief has a passive where 75% of the time, if you're attacking him and he is not under a hex debuff, he will redirect the attack of your character to another head. Now this only works for single target attacks. AOE attacks will always hit the head of mischief. That's why you have a few champs. Uh, for example, Vizix, she has AOEs. She has two of them. You have Lydia with an AOE. So multiple champs with AOEs. Plus Ninja has that um, hail burn. It is random, but yeah, it can hit the head of mischief as well. So there are ways to deal with the head of mischief. Uh, but in particular, you don't want the Head of Mischief just swallowing champs over and over and over. Now, the Head of Mischief is the least tanky, so when you do hit him, you're going to hit him for big damage numbers, but still, he's really hard to hit because we don't have a Hex Champ in the team comp. So, once again, third thing we're looking for, and this is pure chance as well, like everything else, we don't want the Head of Mischief swallowing our champs that often. And last point here, number four, deals with the head of Decay. So in particular, we want to watch our first A2 speed of Decay. It is a team-wide cleanse. So what we don't want to do is put all our debuffs on the Hydra heads right before he's going to cleanse them. So make sure to keep an eye out on the head of Decay if that head is still a uh, head you're fighting to make sure that you're not timing your debuffs and wasting them right before this head is going to cleanse them. So guys, we're going to start off with the first few minutes of a run just so you see how I set things up and how I use the different champs. So starting with Arbiter, yes, we will use this A3 to turn meter boost and increase attack. So in particular, that's going to help Shamail and that's going to help Ninja out. Next up, guys, we got Lydia and I will be using her A2. That is that decrease defense and weaken AOE plus strengthen and increase speed to all allies. Now, I did mention to make sure to not use your debuffs right before the Head of Decay in particular is going to use this Speed of Decay, this AoE Cleanse. Now, as you see, there is no cooldown here. This Head of Decay will use this in the next turn. But as I mentioned, I do like to maximize the damage, so I just start off with this. So, putting that decreased defense and weaken strong version uh, on all the enemies, plus it is gonna proc the Head of Torment, putting a fear on Lydia and as you saw, the turn meter boost got boosted for Ninja because of that. So guys, next up is Ninja. And whenever this A2 is available, I use it because it is his hardest hitting skill. Now, it attacks three times at random, um, but that's fine. Sometimes it hits that stupid head of mischief, so that's nice. His second hardest hitting skill actually is his A1. So definitely make use of that when you can. Plus, it applies that strong version decreased defense. So if uh, some of the decreased defense debuffs have fallen off some of the Hydra heads, you can reapply it with Ninja's A1. The third hardest hitting skill is this A3. But Cyan Slash, it does cool down the A2 by one turn. So that's really nice. That's why I use this. Not for its damage, but because it cools down the A2. So you will see me use that as well. But now it's going to be Hailburn. So guys, next up is Vizix here, and normally I would use the A2 here for the decreased speed AoE debuff, but because of the Head of Mischief still has that AoE cleanse available, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to actually go with the A3 here. Now, the A3 here does have a provoke, but it's not going to work against any of the heads. I'm basically using it for its damage. So just remember that Vizix, man, has two AoEs, and that can be really useful for getting uh, your champ regurgitated out of the Head of Mischief, because the Head of Mischief cannot dodge AoE attacks only single target attacks and all the damage matters especially when you're trying to get one of your champs back out of the mouth of one of those hydras so uh, right now i'm going to make use of this a3 not because of the provoke but just because of the damage next up we got shamel here now his a3 
does ignore 100% of defense if he's under three or more buffs, and he is under three or more buffs right now. So I'm gonna use it against the Head of Torment, and the Head of Torment is going to try to apply fears to Shumail, which Shumail is gonna remove and turn meter boost ninja. So that's a cycle that we're gonna see. So because I'm using my alt account, you're not going to see Shamael apply those poisons because he does not have a toxic set. So in case you're wondering why aren't there any poisons, it's because Shamael is not in a toxic set. Back to Arbiter. So make sure to keep this A2 available if the Head of Mischief happens to steal some buffs. So this is going to be helpful to reduce the durations of those buffs. And if they're one, then you're removing them completely. So keep this available. But if you don't need to use this, then you're going to go with the A1 on the Head of Torment proc that fear with a passive Shamel is going to remove it and turn meter boost ninja so that's what we're doing next so up next we got ninja again because he's been turn meter boosted so much so we are going to use the a3 here to cool down the a2 so which targets are we going to go for we can go for the head of mischief but because uh, ninja is veiled he's not going to proc that fear that Shamel can remove and therefore turn meter boost ninja so we have two other targets here. Now the head of Mischief here actually has the lowest defense. So you're gonna do the biggest damage out of the head of Mischief and out of the head of Mischief's severed head. Okay, that is gonna be the most damage you can do, but he's hard to hit with single target attacks, uh, but it's up to you. Now here with the head of Suffering, he actually has the most defense and that includes his severed head. So even that severed head, sometimes you're not gonna really target it because you're not gonna do the most damage to it compared to some other heads that you have. So just consider that, keep that in mind, but really it's up to you. Um, no matter what, I'm gonna use this A3 to cool down this A2, so I will try to attack here, the head of mischief. Let's see if we're lucky. No, we're not. So as you saw, the Head of Mischief did steal buffs, but didn't steal them from Volgoth because a lot of people had multiple buffs. That does happen at the beginning of the fight. So hopefully as the fight progresses, Volgoth will get most of the targeting uh, from the Head of Mischief, but it's not 100%. But hopefully it happens most of the time. But this is why I mentioned it's important to have uh, Arbiter's A2 available to remove these buffs. Uh, either before he spreads them or even after is fine as well, but the earlier the better. Next up is Lydia, and we're going to try to use this A3 on the Head of Mischief. Now, as you guys know, the Head of Mischief has a 75% chance of redirect, single target attacks aimed towards it. That's fine, we're just going to try as much as we can. Sometimes we'll land this, sometimes we don't. Actually, the majority we don't, but that's fine. When we can land it, that is an extra line of protection against this Head of Mischief stealing buffs and spreading them. With a block uh, buffs debuff on the head of mischief, it cannot take on new buffs, even though it can remove them from your team. And if it can't take on new buffs, then it can't spread them. So we're always going to try to put this A3 uh, block buffs debuff on this head of mischief. Sure, most times it'll fail. It's okay. Uh, we are still going to try to do this whenever it's available. <laughs> Redirection. Next up, guys, is Vogoth, so basically just attack whoever you want with this A1. So the Head of Mischief has used its buff spread ability, so notice all the Hydra Heads now have a lot of buffs that my team has or had. So we're going to use Arbiter's A2 here to try to remove some of those buffs. Back to Lydia with that A3 skill, trying to put that block buffs debuff on the head of mischief. Redirected again. Next up, Vizix with the A2, that is that AoE decrease speed. So remember, we're always looking at the head of decay and the cooldowns for his cleanse. At four turns for that cooldown, perfect time to apply this A2 decrease speed. So Shumail, for the majority of the time, is just going to go for the Head of Torment when it's available. So time for more Hailburn. So we did proc an extra turn. Remember, he is Veiled here, so uh, we could go against the Head of Torment again. Uh, we're not going to get that extra turn meter boost, but that's fine. Now we did get a Decapitated Head there.
So Arbiter is up with her turn meter boost and increased attack. So we're going to try to maximize the damage on that severed head. So here with Lydia, we're just going to attack that severed head because nothing else is available. So with Volgoth here, I'm going to try to attack the head of Decay with uh, Volgoth's A1 to hopefully increase the duration of that decreased speed debuff. There you go, we got it. So we're keeping on targeting that severed head. 126,000 damage from Shimeo, big damage numbers. So since only one Hydra head has that decreased defense, we're not gonna use Vizix A3 AoE. We're just gonna target the severed head with Vizix's A1. So as you just saw, the Head of Mischief tried to target Volgoth and steal his buffs, but since we have a high resist Volgoth, the Head of Mischief left with nothing. So Arbiter's next. I do like to keep her A4 available to revive. Now some of you guys, feel free to use it if you want, but her A1 though does have a weaken on it. So we're gonna attack that severed head and hopefully apply that weaken debuff so we can maximize the damage that we're doing against it. There you go. So for Ninja here, I do have the A3 available to cool down the A2, but notice the A2 will already be cooled down by the next turn. So instead, I'm going to use the A1 because it does more damage against that severed head. 114,000 damage. Ninja's damage will go higher and higher because of that escalation passive. But up next, we got Lydia and her A2 is available. And notice the cooldown, three turn cooldown for the head of Decay, so it's a fine time to use it. So Shamel's next and everything is set up. He has three or more buffs, right? Four. He has his A2 available, plus he has a severed head. Watch him do big damage. About 150,000 each hit on that triple hit. All the Hydra heads have decreased defense and weakened, so perfect time to use Vizix's A3 for that damage. A1 for Arbiter against that severed head. So the Head of Mischief again targeting Volgoth and failing to steal any buffs. Once again, because Volgoth is high resist. So uh, next we have Lydia and we're going with that A3 again, trying to target the Head of Mischief. Let's see if we get lucky. We got lucky this time. So two turns of block buffs. So because the Head of Mischief does have that block buffs debuff up, uh, it won't be able to steal debuffs. It will only be able to remove them. Uh, which is good. Now we're going to go hopefully against the head of mischief with a Volgoth A1 to extend some debuffs. So let's see if Volgoth can do that. Redirected and did not extend any buffs. Ninja's up with his Hailburn. That is your number one source of damage. We got an extra turn, so we are going to use that A3 to cool down Hailburn. So we're just gonna target the same head since it's separate and we get bonus damage. See, the damage is not that big. Arbiter with their A3 turn meter boost and attack up. Shamel's up, he can still do big damage against that severed head with his A1. 160,000. So still two turns left on the Head of Decay's AoE Cleanse. So perfect time to use Vizix's A2 here, this decreased speed AoE. And yes, it does work against Severed Heads. Nothing to do here with Lydia, but go against that Severed Head with the A1. Alright guys, that is it for today. I think you've seen enough to get the gist of how to fight the Hydra with this team. Now, I'm not saying the way I do it is the absolute best. There may be better ways to do it, but that's just basically the way I've fought the Hydra to get the damage numbers that I have. If you're a mid-game player, I hope this helps you out with the Hydra, get the damage that you need, not only to get rewards for yourself, but also to push your clan up and unlock that next tier of difficulty. If you haven't yet, like, subscribe, and share, turn on all notifications, stay safe, and happy holidays.